All right, hey everybody, we're back here with Gary Gillette, who is the former Central High School uh, band teacher. <laughs> Thank but, you. Uh, but first and foremost, he is the uh, Missoula City Band Director, <laughs> That's and it, he uh, every summer you do the City Band, and this year, um, you wrote a book. I can Well, in my <laughs> retirement, thanks for not saying the old Central <laughs> Band teacher, uh, even though I, at times I, I feel a little old. Um, I... Uh, I retired from public school teaching, but I still conduct the city band. Of and course. Was, in my retirement, the first project, the first big project I took on was the history of the city band. I've been I've been dink, dinking around with it for years. You know, in the summer times, I we'd do a composition, and I I I'd go down to the library. That's before we had. Uh, uh, the, the advantage of uh, the Missoula now is all digital online. You can do it from your home. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not anymore, man. Uh, back yeah, in go the back old to days. Your microfiche? Yep, yep. Me and the microfiche down <laughs> in the Missoula Public Library, man. <laughs> and you uh, got to go fish for those articles? I'm oh, yeah, sorry, that's yeah. a terrible pun. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was fun, and it, 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 caught, my, it caught my attention. So. And, and it's, not a fairly new, it's not a fairly new concept with the whole digital age. No. Nah. Because, like, I remember I went down with my dad to that, and he was just like, I don't want to see what happened in Missoula when I was born. Yeah, that's right. And I found that, you know, I did, you know, one of my sons, something happened on the day that my son, that my older son was born, and I even put it in the book. It was <laughs> a bit selfish, but it was something that was, that was notable, the band, I forget what it was. So I spent a year in, in uh, um, uh, research and then uh, uh, and then I started trying to write. Oh my god! Well, being like but like you, <laughs> not... you 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 know how to talk, <laughs> <laughs> and it, this is fairly autobiographical as well because you kind of like I would think that you'd approach it probably from your own perspective as city band director since yeah. 1992. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you kind of throw it in in about what you've experienced with some of the past directors. And yeah, but I tried not to. Uh, so the perspective. Uh, of being a, a band director helps understand what had happened with it. Uh, I just started telling stories. I had writer's block for some time trying to figure out how am I going to, uh, uh, how do I begin? I just can't start <laughs> in 1865. That was all way too boring. I, so I started telling stories, the most ridiculous and uh, interesting stories, and then worked out from that. I think it's always funny that when you when you talk to people and you say, I was like, okay, don't give that man a microphone. Um, if you want to uh, shut up a guy who uh, you don't give a microphone to, give him a pencil. Like and if you want to <laughs> shut up somebody who uh, with a pencil who writes too much, give him a microphone. That's usually how it works out because they a lot of people speak with their uh, with their written word. A lot of people speak. Oh, okay. Well, I I ended up doing much of my writing with uh, uh, voice to text on the computer. Someone turned me on to it. That's awesome. And uh, I. Uh, once I got a hang of it, uh, that's what I started doing. I just started tell, talking, it's telling stories. It's really cool. And then I had to go back and edit. Oh, my gosh, you know, the, uh, the software isn't anything, uh, uh, well, on my Chromebook computer. Uh, the software <laughs> is, <laughs> was rather small, uh, so it was trying to figure out what words I was saying and the you know, punctuation and all that. But still, I was able in, oh, an hour to spew out a story. Well, it'd take me days to edit it. Uh, and then I was wise enough to, to uh, have three different editors. So I'm going to have to start acting and speaking more intelligently. Because you're a writer. Because, <laughs> because people read the book and know that, hey, he just had that sucker ghost written. That's what I, I, I had really good, uh, good folks that helped me edit the book. That's great. And what is the book called? The Missoula City Band Stories in Time. Cool. It and began course, as the history of the Missoula City Band. It sounded way full. So we do have a picture. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can bring it up a there little bit. There you go. We can pretend that's the book right there. Because that's the, the book, book is cover. in print. That's right, being printed right now. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so uh you're self publishing? Uh no. I have a publisher. You have a publisher. I have a publisher and editors and a, a sweet no, uh, uh, me in my living room on my Chromebook computer. That's what was my office. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, he, he also happens to be an, a, a, a band parent, a former band parent. So Stonydale Press out of Stevensville, who deals in historical and hunting books. Wow. Though I've got no hunting stories in this one. It's all, all historical. Yeah, I mean, because every time <laughs> you uh, represent uh, Montana in a book, it's always about the river that runs yeah, through it. Yeah, that's it, man. All the thing about hunting and all, all that stuff. Never something that's uh, basically been a part of the city of Missoula since it's it, before so, it was considered be, a city. Before it was a city. Before we were a state. State, at Missoula, 
before we were Missoula Mills, just a little when Warden showed up and, and had a little log cabin out by Grant Creek. There was a band. <laughs> there was a band. I, I, I just like imagine like you with the microphone. It's like poor warden was out there in his cabin. There was a band. There was a band, man. Before the bridge was washed away in the big flood, there was there a was band. There was a band, and we celebrated. <laughs> uh, you know, it was a sign of of civilization. That that there, there were musicians there, and when there was something going on, there had to be a program. And well, who led the program? The band did. That's what they did. Everything that happened in Missoula, the band was there. And some years, the, the, the press d d didn't have anything to write about except the band. <laughs> so, it, and like go you, back. you would say that um, back in the day when they were, when the city band held concerts, they, were, they held it on the Missoula courthouse lawn, right? Yep, yep, yep. For years and years, and then they would build a, a little band shell or a gazebo, and then we'd outgrow it, and then the you know Missoula grew. And they had to tear down the, the band jail because they needed to build that god awful looking <laughs> extension on the courthouse. And we, Sorry. Don't, we all know oh. we all know that one. Oh man, what an ugly! <laughs> and who came up with that? A.J. <laughs> Gibson rolling over in his grave. What well, they tore down the A.J. Gibson band? There used to be a, 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 a complimentary oh. band shell, you know, a gazebo right there. Uh, designed by the same guy who designed the courthouse. They tore it down, built that abomination, and then <laughs> built, <laughs> built a different band shell that quickly uh, the band outgrew, and there was all kinds of, what, what are we gonna go, what are we gonna do? And then so the band would just play in the steps or play in the lawn of the courthouse, and they tried some different parks. They thought about going out Greeno back when they had the grizzly bear. Uh, oh, uh, right. Uh, uh, I'm sure the bear would have loved it. <laughs> oh, geez, sir, and they did that caged up grizzly bear. Uh, uh, and they finally decided to move it out to Bonner, Bonner Park. Mm, which you know it as today. Yeah. But of course, you're not only just talking about the book, you, we want to do a little plugging of the Missoula City Band, which starts on June 13th. It is. It does every uh, subsequential Wednesday until August 12th. Subsequential. Good going, boy. All right. August 12th. Got to August 15th. for my own show. All the way through <laughs> August 15th. So uh, the, the, the first major concert of the year will be this book release of the history of the band. But what it really is about is about the band. And it's, it'll be every Wednesday. I think every begin. I think we begin rehearsals. <laughs> God, I'm ready for it, but I miss uh, you know, dealing with the calendar. Do I... Did I turn over the page today? It's today, June one. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, so that's when my that's when my job begins. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so I think I begin rehearsals like in two weeks. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, the first concert, I'm going to buy some time for the for the city band so we can rehearse, and the Missoula big band is going to play the preseason the preseason special like we did last year awesome. on June 13. But the but the kickoff for the major c series is June 20th, and uh, I'll be out signing. I'll be out signing my book uh, after and before the, uh, <laughs> and the program, the program will be historically uh, designed. So uh, they'll be doing tunes from ooh, the band in 1910 and the band in 1920 and the, the, those kind of things. Twyla Wolf is going to come back nice. and sing with us. Uh, uh, we're doing a couple of the famous Montana songs that uh, uh, are associated with Missoula and or Montana. Awesome. And then every Wednesday through August 15th. Cool. Um, is there anything you want to say? Is there like a theme for this year's city band? <laughs> Bigger and better. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all built around the book, and I can't help but but uh, uh, be picking gems as the year goes on of these tunes that that have been lost and uh, and now found. Uh, 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 the state song and the song that seems to be the alma mater for uh, University of Montana, oh. though it's not. It's not officially the alma mater song, but there was a, of course it, it, w it was a state song for a bit. I found out in the research. The research is just so much fun. Uh, it, following these ideas and threads, and still, you know, every week I've got somebody else that I meet up with and find out something different or new or find a family connection. That was, th those are the, the neatest stories, are people that are still alive right now whose great-great-grandfather conducted a city band back in the 20s, that kind of deal. Yeah, and then of course oh. you meet the, like, the grandson of the yeah. third clarinet. Yeah, walking into, the, <laughs> walking into the, uh, the Montana Club, the old Heidel House, that picture, being a good band boy yourself, you, 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 do you, 
Do you, do you know the picture I'm talking about? Uh, the third booth on the left. You're walking in the Montana Club. The third booth on the left, before, oh. right there before oh, the yeah. bathrooms, there's a picture of the city band. Well, I've been enamored with that picture for years. That's a good excuse to go uh, have something to eat. Uh, <laughs> and I walked by there one time with a colleague, your old choir teacher, uh, Nancy Labby. Oh. And she said, I've got relatives in that picture. And I went, ah, the heck you do. <laughs> By the end of the night, I had pictures. I had three more pictures to uh, uh, of her family, and there's there's two two of her relatives in that picture. And I connected those relatives up to somebody else's relative. Old Dickinson Music. That was before your time, but there used to be a music store. There was a music store in 1880, run by Dickinson. And it's only been the last 20 years that there hadn't been. Finally, that line of Dickinsons wow. uh, petered out. But they were the music store in Missoula forever, and they played in the city band. Oh, there's, so, there's so many stories. There's so many rich stories. And of course, <laughs> Gary, Je Gary Gillette will share them all with you. <laughs> I will. Most likely during all the city band concerts. Maybe you come out there, read a passage from his book. It's like, this is a passage from my book, now on sale. <laughs> hawking. hawking. I, 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 I'm afraid it's going to turn into like the Rosencrantz project. Always out there hawking. Because the, I, I had to buy a lot of books. Again, the, the difference between getting 500, well, you can't get anything less than 500. And I wasn't going to get ebooks. Could you imagine all my blue hairs dealing with ebooks? <laughs> I can't. So I've got real books, real books, paper. And uh, I had to buy a thousand of them. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All proceeds going hey, to the Missoula City Band. Missoula City Band, people in Missoula, <laughs> if they want to support the Missoula City Band. Look, I can book. give you something besides entertainment. It's a thousand books, but there's 80,000 people in Missoula. <laughs> so I'd say uh, it's That's like 8%. Half, of, of, half a book per family. Yeah, only eight, I guess eight percent of people can get the book out of Missoula, and then everyone what? else is gonna be like, "Where'd you get that book?" Ah, I'll have to do a reprint. Yeah, <laughs> or photocopy. No, no reprint. All right. Well, good luck, Gary. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Hey, every Wednesday, Bonner Park starting on June whenever it is. It's a couple weeks, June thirteenth. Mm -hmm. Cool. We'll see you there, Scotty. Yep. All right.